This video is being presented by my executive producer Dietrich. Thank you so much for your support for the channel and if you guys want to become one too, check out the first link in the description down below. In the last video essay I had the topic of Belgrade and its abandoned buildings, which gained quite a bit of attention but it was just the tip of the iceberg. The topic of this video is going to be a lot more controversial and more about the people who live in Serbia and what is in their minds. Now to give you a quick disclaimer, I'm a Serbian citizen myself who lives abroad and who witnesses the developments of Serbia daily through TV and internet. I'm not intending to make a video to hate on Serbia, but rather to inform people how the things really are and without painting sunshine and rainbows on the picture. If you are sensitive to criticism and tend to hit the thumb down button faster than a lightning when some opinion is not matching yours, then press the X button in the top right corner of your screen. For everyone else, let's dive straight into the topic. Ah, Serbia. A country currently famous for being enormously fast, with vaccinating the people and being second in Europe just behind the UK. But what if I tell you that there is a much bigger disease going on in Serbia for already multiple years in a row? And no, this has nothing to do with retarded YouTubers. Check this out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, reality TV is enormously strong in the Serbian public. Zadruga and Parovi are currently on air and the fact that those two shows are on national free-to-air TV channels is extremely worrisome. Even in the afternoon when kids come home from school, this stuff is being aired on TV, albeit censored. But it is still horrendous how the moral values of a society went down the drain so quickly and actively promoting such programs at any given time of the day. I define here with the term reality TV show exclusively shows where contestants are in because of a competitive format without a proper program and not a format like a dancing, singing or talent show. But how did all of this start in the first place? Back in the 2000s when Serbia became a free country, there was a surge in demand for entertainment and some foreign franchises such as Big Brother and Survivor entered the market. I remember back in the day when I was on holiday in Serbia how much I didn't understand the concept of Big Brother and found it weird how people were being all the time filmed. Even the fact that this was an 18 plus show and aired in the afternoon was alien to me as well. In that time when I talked with other kids in the village, some of them actually asked me whether I do watch Big Brother and among them was also a 4 year old girl. Yes, you heard that right, a four-year-old girl. However, the reasons why all of that happened was not because the reality TV shows came, but more because of the circumstances from the decade before. For that I recommend you to watch my previous video, because there I explained why the 90s were a horrible decade for all Serbians. Anyway, the success of Big Brother lasted a couple of years, and after it got in decay, the reality show Pharma appeared and became a much bigger success, mainly because it was a show going on for a period of 3-4 to four months and was exclusive to celebrity candidates, unlike Big Brother where only the normal version was 3 months long and the VIP version just a month. In the meantime, the desire to develop some genuine Serbian formats was the idea and Parovi and Zadruga got established and are now the shows associated with the reality TV the most. The craze for reality TV shows went so far that those shows don't last 3 months anymore but rather 10 or 11 months. I think I couldn't remain in a TV show for so long, especially when I'm not even allowed to keep a phone or TV in my room or freely move around. But these days we are more restricted than ever before, aren't we? Anyway, contestants in the shows are usually not allowed to maintain any contact with 
the outside world and are constantly monitored by dozens of cameras. You're not even left alone when you're sleeping. The whole concepts about the shows are rather loose and not really relevant. What matters the most is that every week contestants get thrown out and usually the ones who have the most drama between each other are advancing and remain in the show. Sounds like as if it is kind of normal like in real life, isn't it? Well, yes, but actually no. The thing is, it is called a reality TV show, but in fact the circumstances are like enormously surreal and resemble more a prison rather than real life. The contestants are under constant pressure and have very limited amount of personal freedom and being monitored for such a long time can lead to stress and irrational decisions. But why are those celebrities entering those shows? Serbian celebrities are not comparable to American or British celebrities, which usually do not have to worry about finances and can work on their hustle. Serbian celebrities have to do multiple things in life in order to keep up and often have side businesses running along their usual careers as singers, rappers, actors or models. Singers and rappers make the most money out of giving gigs abroad in Western Europe and earn quite a bit of money with it. But when their careers become irrelevant and money is getting tied, Instead of making new music, they decide to enter a reality TV show because the prize money seems worth enduring the torture and getting some extra media exposure. Sounds like a legit way, especially now during the COVID-19 crisis, doesn't it? Absolutely not, and that is the thing what is enormously dangerous about the shows. A lot of those contestants are in relationships or marriages and being locked away from the public for a ridiculously long time results in cases where some romantic affairs happen, such as in the case with Kia Kotskar and her ex-husband Slobodan Radanovic, who was having an affair with another contestant, Luna Giogani. I'm going to mention Luna later again, because she's somebody who pisses me off big time. The drama around them with all the arguments and tears was so popular and basically everyone in Serbia and in the neighboring countries of Montenegro and Bosnia and Herzegovina knew who the three people were. I'm just asking myself, how can a reality TV show encourage the contestants to betray their partner with a different person? Isn't that the worst thing you can ever do as a husband or wife? Even in the current season of Zara, Zadruga 4, one of the contestants, Nenad Aleksic Shah, who is a popular singer, had an affair with another contestant while he is a married man. He even accused his wife to be guilty for him betraying her. When I heard of this, I was absolutely mad. I mean, other contestants in other formats have done such awful things too. But I find it pretty sad because he was one of those celebrities whom I thought he's a decent guy who knows what he's doing. I like his music quite a lot, attended his gigs, and I find it cool how he's still trying to be young although he's already 40. How can you even have the guts to tell this on the TV? Can't you reflect yourself and actually realize that you ruined it for yourself and that no one else is guilty but you? You're not 20 years old that you can be a fuckboy and date other girls without having any consequences. You're 40 years old and married. How can you even look at yourself in the mirror? Some people in Zadruga just take the whole reality TV thing to a whole new level, such as Miljana Kulic, a woman who has absolutely no status whatsoever, got into the show while she was pregnant and now she's in the show again with a baby. Excuse me, but what the fuck? How can the TV production team actually allow this to happen? Why isn't any government institution doing anything against it? Now let's go back to Luna, because she's the person who is the most disturbing celebrity. First of all, she's in an affair in a TV show. Then she cries all the time during the TV show, participates in the next season again, wins it, because everyone pities her and then she gets famous without actually doing something good. And now, why am I jealous of her? Uh, sorry. Why do I dislike her so much? Easy. She's the most terrible role model someone can have. Just look here in this video with her new guy how she's sitting in the car. Do you notice that she's not wearing a seat belt? Even on comments from viewers of her live streams, she gets asked by them why she's not wearing a seat belt and then she just replies in a rather rude manner that she's tired of those questions and that people should ask her different things instead. Isn't she aware that this kind of behavior is reckless and dangerous to her life? Especially I would put on a seatbelt if I was driving with her new boyfriend. Because that dude is just a maniac behind the wheel. 
Apart from that, she's also notorious for parking on spots reserved for people using wheelchairs, which is clearly reserved for people who are handicapped, physically and not mentally retarded like her. Now, what does this have to do with the title? Simple. Serbia is being demoralized by those bloody reality TV shows and people literally sell themselves like prostitutes for money in order to maintain their lifestyle and make their hustle. People in Serbia aren't shocked of anything anymore. Divorcing rates are skyrocketing because betraying is socially accepted, kids are being left at home watching unsuitable shows in the afternoon and not watching some children's TV channels because the parents cannot afford proper cable TV, and finally the TV channel owners like Željko Mitrovic from Pink TV can live their megalomaniac dreams by building the biggest reality TV show concepts and cashing in a lot of money from brainwashed people who send SMS votes for their favorites who have to stay in the competition, while at the same time young people in Serbia have to be supported by SMS with donations for their cancer therapies or transplants, because the country can't take care of its most precious asset for the future. Of course other countries have problems too, but instead of looking across the neighbor's fence, why don't we start dealing with our own mess first? Until when we are going to tolerate this mass demoralization of our society? The 90s are over and we are now in the 2020s. Why is this demoralization still going on? As long as hate prevails towards our own kind and greed for money and power remains dominant in our minds, our society won't change for the good. I have to admit that it is quite entertaining to get an in-depth look into other people's lives and that it is interesting to get to know them better without them knowing you. But this is getting too far and on top of that, the team of Paparazzolov spies and chases family members and spouses of the Zadruga contestants, even though they are not involved in the stuff happening there. In the end, we are all losers and the only winners are the ones who own the TV stations and ridicule the whole country and its people. Now, what do you think of all of this? Do you watch yourself reality TV shows? I'd be glad if you could write a comment below. I'm curious of your inputs. Don't forget to give this video a thumb up and hit the subscribe button and activate the bell icon so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Do you want to stay in touch with me? My Instagram account, my TikTok account and my Discord server are all free linked in the description down below. Thank you Benny for being the sound engineer and if you wish to become a supporter of my channel with uh, being mentioned in my videos, check out the first link in the description, it leads you to my Patreon page. Stay tuned and I hope to see you the next time.